Hey guys, Gassy TV here with another Christmas spirit video. In this one, we're going to be talking about the Atlas innovation that's coming up. And I wanted to talk about the um, basically uh, builds you can use for the event. Now, the problem with these events during the entire December event is actually the fact that pretty much all of them will be the same build recommendation. For this, it would be a more of a bossing-oriented focus on the bills. I think that Toxic Rain would actually still be good, though. I think VDDD will perform. But I do believe that the best bills to play with would probably be um, the Mate Skeleton, the Seismic Trap, potentially the Eye of Winter Miner, as well as the uh, option of going Golems and stuff like that. And other than that, it's basically any build that was functional as a League starter during the Scourge League or any of the other events will work for this one too. But I think that those mentioned builds would be the best. However, there is one build that I want to focus on in this video that is a bit of a resident sleeper that people haven't really been caught in and catching up to, which is something that I've been playing on stream for the last few days. I've been fiddling with in today's stream as well. And that is actually Chains of Command. Now, hopefully, these uh, bosses that we'll be encountering in the Atlas Invasion will be dropping their unique items or boss uniques. And I really hope that's going to be the case because this build is a proper big girthy cock. Not one of those compensating cock builds. You know, I got a small PP, so I'll play cast on crit with a cost base matters. No, no, no. We're doing the real cock. And the real cock is using Chains of Command. Now, there are two different versions of this, which is what I'm working on right now. And I'll hopefully have at least the PUBs ready before this video is launched. Uh, well, actually, that's going to be done. Um, and the version that I've been playing is a Templar version. The Templar version uh, is able to run 30 wave simulacrum. Uh, the only problem with it uh, is two things. One being that you needed a little bit more chaos resistance, and I didn't really focus on that on the gear, so I used an amethyst flask, and once I equipped that one, I only died once after that, and I did all the 30 waves. The second problem is that um, uh, without super high budget, you're not going to get a lot of rewards per wave uh, towards the end. Early on, it's pretty okay, but as the enemy gets tankier, you're not going to have that many... Um, with that many rewards from each wave from the 30 wave simulacrum so this build is actually really good it's super tanky able to do 30 wave simulacrum and it's not really that expensive um however i've been using a curse implicit on the grave buying gloves for the ag i'm not going to go too in depth in, in the build i will provide you guys with the pub of course but i wanted to talk about the build because i will be making a proper build guide as well as a written guide for this build that's how good it is so the change of command is basically designed around you killing minions through your writing jar flasks. And that's really cool. Uh, through Anime Guardian and then utilizing the Gravebind Gloves, if I can find them right there. So the Gravebind Gloves is allowing you to let your Anime Guardian, if you put them on him, to summon um, animate weapons based of him doing killing blows through the change of command, uh, which is guaranteed as long as it's within the radius of the Gravebind. Uh, and it looks like this. So I'm going to show you. So I in here, if I summon, uh, come back here. Yep, his name is Creature. Um, so he does two instances of a kill, one here, one here. That gives me two minions. And since there's a 0 0.5 second cooldown trigger on the chains of command, if they kill them with too fast or within one blow, then I only get one minion. So now I got two weapons. Do it again. I got another two. I got another two. I got only one there. Two or oh, one there. I got nothing because it's bounded too fast. Got another two. And two, and now we have 14, which is the max cap. However, if a killing blow happens outside of the radius of Greybind, there is a risk that we, instead of getting the level 20 version, we would only get the level 18 version, which is only a 10% chance on kill. And you can only have 13 of those weapons with the level 18. So that's how the mechanic works of summoning this. Now, obviously, this presents us with a situation where it's crucial for us to have a flask charges generated. This is done through a couple of different ways. First one being the... Uh, Rislata, which is life flask gain three charges every three seconds if they haven't been using life flask recently. I actually went away from this. And the reason for this is because I got so many charges from the other ways we're doing it that I never needed it. So I went away from it. I went with physical damage re reduction instead from Ralakesh. And I'm still able to spam this consistently. Now, how the fuck do we do that? Well, first off, we're using an amulet with replenishing remedies. And replenishing remedies gives us two charges for life flask every three seconds, and mana flask charges gets two every three seconds. And these counts as both a life and a mana flask. So just this note alone is four charges every three seconds. We also have the mastery from the flask mastery giving us one mana and one life every three seconds. 
which now means we're getting five charges every three seconds. Then we have increased flash charges gain, five, five, and then another uh, 25 up here. And that's really all we really need. And that's generating a ton of flash charges for us, which is absolutely crazy. Uh, I do want to mention, though, that you, I am using a Defiance banner in this POB for higher defense. Uh, this is made possible by having a, an amulet that gives a reservation reduction on either discipline or determination. We obviously have a mastery with determination down here as well. So if you don't have access to that in the League Start scenario, just skip the Defiance banner uh, or the discipline. It doesn't really matter which one you opt out of. The other part of Flash Sustain is the secrets or survival secrets. This is a jewel you get from, I believe it's Act 2 quest. So you can pick that up, which means that you're getting another three charges every three seconds uh, while they are inactive, which is absolutely insane. And since these flasks are not going to be doing anything but giving a super instant recovery, they will pretty much always be inactive, giving us a ton of flask charges, which is absolutely crazy. So uh, let's see if I did a fuck up with the calculation. I think it did. Six charges. Plus the survival secrets, so that's what, nine charges or something per second, or per three seconds or something. Either way, it's crazy with this sustain on the flask, and this is done without going Pathfinder, right? So that's how we sustain the, the uh, writhing jars. The other flask is basically just a granite flask with extra defense, and uh, we have an amethyst flask with movement speed instead of the quicksilver, uh, which is I only some, uh, something I added for extra layers of defense. We are utilizing Divine Shield, which makes it not able to recover any shield above our armor. 3% of our physical damage is prevented. That is prevented from hits. Only physical damage. Keep that in mind. Is regenerated as energy shield per second. It's a nice way to sustain a little bit of extra buffer of energy shield. Not really noticeable versus bosses that much, but versus clearing, it's actually very, very comfortable. Uh, and that's about it. The clearing with this build is very comfortable. I'm going to show you a map run with this. But before I do so, I just wanted to finish off the talk about the build and show you a quick rundown of uh, an Occultus version that we're working on right now. So uh, with the weapons sorted, 14 weapons out, this build in its current state with a bottle of faith, this is the higher body version of it, you'll get about 19.4 million shaper DPS and 38,000 armor. It's, it's pretty fucking crazy. This is using Delve Rings with minion damage. These are actually very good. You should definitely be looking into that. The amulet can have discipline or determination. Uh, reservation doesn't really matter. If you can get something with life and energy shield, that would be the pre preferable situation. But stats to sort your gem requirements because you need 159 dexterity is one thing. Uh, you also want to be in a position where you get a large cluster jewel with renewal and vicious bites to get the crit up. Preferably with a life roll if you can. That's again for the high budget. You can skip this for the lower budgets. Inside the large cluster, it's important that you put your covenant jewels in here, which is a fortress covenant and a quickening covenant, because then you don't get the negative impact, and these provide you with extra block as well. Um, and the block is very important, which is why we're specking into minion block nodes as well as getting the elite mastery. The reason why this is so important is because the necromantic ages, which I would recommend using without focusing on the block with a victorious charity on the lower body end till you get your hands on one of these shields, is actually the cold attuned bucket from the heist encounters, I believe it is. This allows you to inflict brittle on enemies when you block their attack. And this allows you to be in a situation where you have an army of minions that your enemies will be hitting. And when your endgame bosses are doing attack, which you'll be encountering a lot in the Atlas animation, they are almost always doing a strike cleave attack or a spell AOE attack. And because of this, they're going to hit more than one enemy, one of your weapons. This means multiple targets are hit. And when they have a ridiculous amount of block chance, at least one of them will block the attack, which applies a 5% brittle. 5% brittle means 5% base crit. They have 5% base crit, which means you're doubling your crit chance, which is then doubling the efficiency of anything that you have that scales crit. So in this POV that we have here, they have 77% crit chance right now. This is done with uh, this is done with a Void Forge weapon, uh, which is why we're going for the penetration of elemental resistances versus cursed enemies. What's really good with this style is that things like Simulacrum or the, the pure breach stones and stuff like that, they tend to have different modifiers that gives them a ton of extra resistances versus one element, uh, elemental resistance. 
And because of the way Void Forge works, you will uh, have a random hit of fire, cold, or lightning, which means that a third of your damage will be affected by this extra resistances, but two thirds of all the attacks you're doing will not be affected by that because they don't have that extra resistances, allowing you to always maintain a very high damage output. This is one of the reasons why Mage Skelter is very good versus these encounters. However, for the Atmos Evasion, you don't really have that problem with map, well, end game bosses showing up in maps, allowing you to be very effective with the build um, in general. Other than that, it's just a generic kind of uh, high HP stack in armor tree for a minion build, and it's just surprisingly tanky. It's absolutely beautiful. Uh, as soon as you know, it's very straightforward. You just rush Radiant Crusade, Unwavering Crusade, and then a Time of Need or Bastion Hill, Hope, whichever floats you both first, but get the minion ones first, which provides you with extra resistances as well as all stuff for clearing. Um, skill wise, uh, I'm not going to go through the entire build. I'll make a proper build guide for this. The PUB will be in the descriptions below. The well, Occultist version. Thank you so much, Charlie, for the nine months, man. Much love. Thank you, dude. The Occultist version looks currently like this. Uh, I'm going to be fine tuning this before we post it. This one is using Replica Wings of Entropy. Uh, I'm trying out a different weapon right now, which I found on the market for seven Exalted. But the Wings of Entropy uh, looks like this. I'm going to show you that first. And the Wings of Entropy version of this would allow you to, in a Chaos version, push out a grand total of 18 million JP DPS. The problem, of course, versus the higher end game content like Simulacus and whatnot, you're going to be in a position where they can have increased Chaos Resistance, which will obviously lower the damage output in those encounters with this version. But this version goes with Profane Bloom, allowing you to get juicy explosions for better clearing. It also gives you a ton of chaos resistance, which will also help you with tankiness. So I think that in general, the Occultus should be better for clearing. Uh, it's basically the same design of the build. It's just chaos, which is a problem because it's going to require a four white triad grip pair of gloves. So that's basically the two different versions of it. Obviously, I believe that the Templar will be better on a lower budget end, but if you're able to get yourself a four white triad, I think that you can definitely go with the Occultus version. This doesn't prevent you from doing physical style till you can afford it, but again, it's four white triad is not very cheap. Um, and the PUB here is displaying this with the mini damage rings and the uh, reservation ambit, for example, uh, but we'll be fine tuning this later on. Um, same strategy with the flask sustain and everything as well. And I think that pretty much covers the description of this build. So for the sake of it, I'm going to show you uh, map clearing. I don't need to show you bosses because it's already having no problems with that. But I will be showing you a quick run in alleyways just to showcase how effective this build actually is. So this one has elemental resistances. Let's not do that for the sake of showing you. Here's a curse on us. We don't really care about it. And we're going to pop it with metamorph, essences, and bestiary. And I'll show you the clearing. We're not going to use the Divergent Predator. We'll be having our feeding frenzy in there instead. Some of my support gems in this current character in game actually is not very high level. This is using the Void Forge, as you can see. And the map starts off by me just casting out some of the writing jars to get a couple of minions out. And once I have a couple of them, uh, I will basically be spamming these flasks. And uh, then we play. And this is how it looks when you're playing the build. It's tanky, but it doesn't prevent you from uh, from one shots. So there are still situations where you can get pretty pretty fucked over uh, if you're unlucky. But it is very very tanky in general with the sustain you have. Dots is not very fun, and elemental damage is not very fun, as your divine shield doesn't really do shit versus that kind of encounters. But as you can see, we're not we're not trying to stay away from the fight. All I do is just go right up to the face of the enemies and I just spam the writing jars, which will be uh, sustaining itself pretty pretty goddamn well. Oh, we have a scourge boss. Nice. That's a good way to display the build. Let's see if we can find the boss. Here we go. Got him. And again, this is with feeding frenzy, so we don't have our super high. Um, we don't have our super high uh, single target damage here, but as you can see, it's more than manageable to kill bosses with a fairly decent speed. What do we have here? Minus Colrus, Tainted Mythic Orb. And I'll try to show you what it looks like when you're not face tanking it, which would be like this. You would just stay away, keep distance. And just make sure that you don't die. Sometimes you might want to convocate if there's too many enemies around you in, in metamorphs. Just convocate so your minions can clear that off for you. And just stay away from the fight. You don't have to worry about getting one shot and you'll see the VD as well. So you don't have to 
I should do that. Anyways. That's basically the showcase I have to build. So again, recap. Seismic Trap. VDDD. Maybe DD Ignite as well. I think that will be fine. Mage Skeletons. Um, toxic Rain. <laughs> I mean, even Freezing Pulse Seismic Totem would work. But it's like it, pretty much everything that worked for 3.16 Scourge will work in this event as well. Just have make sure the build is able to do bosses and you will be fine. Early in the league will be pretty interesting because it's going to be a bunch of bosses going to hurt a lot. But other than that, they will work. And I didn't want to make another video where I talk about the same builds I've been talking about in previous videos. So instead, we're showcasing this Chains of Commands build instead. Hope you guys enjoyed it. Make sure you hit the like button and subscribe for more content. Until next time, stay safe, keep rocking, and have a merry fucking Christmas.